right. So hi, Jessica. Thanks for agreeing to give this interview. So uh, would you like to talk about what field of mathematics you're in and what you're kind of working on? Um, yeah, I'm working on basically the overlap of two fields between number theory and representation theories. Um, I'm studying representations of periodic groups. So these are matrix groups, um, but not over the convex or real numbers, but matrix groups over the periodic numbers. And that's okay. why it touches number theory. Um, but it's study the representation theory of those. So that's also why I call it representation theory. And it also fits into the Langlands program, which is the idea that there's a deep connection between, on the one hand, um, representation theory, and on the other hand, number theory. So okay. And would you say it feels more like number theory or more like representation theory, or <laughs> your field is completely different? It's, uh, well, so the problem is number theory is a huge area. And so most people, when they hear number theory, they think of, um, what do they actually think of? Yeah, um, I think they might think of, uh, prime numbers and um, solving some equations and so which in some sense is still behind the things I'm doing because the periodic numbers they attach to a prime number p and Galois extensions come from solving equations but it's not this basic number theory that you might first encounter so if you take a course on elementary number theory that's very different from the type of number theory that i'm doing and number theory in general is a huge area so in particular there are, there are people who work on analytic number theory um, which is very very different from the stuff that i'm working on okay so would you like to talk more about what you're in particular working on like what you kind of proved or Yes, yeah, so what I've been working on is, um, well, I've actually, through my career, I've, I've moved a bit around. So I started studying the structure of these, um, of these periodic groups. As I said, periodic groups, these are nice matrix groups over the periodic numbers. Mm -hmm. And periodic numbers, they, they come from P being a prime number. So they are the idea of um, you can work modulo P, a P, modulo P squared, P cubed, and so on. You can do everything together. And that's a bit what the periodic numbers are. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a field that, appears in number theory, but I, um, in my PhD thesis, I studied the structure of these groups, um, which are very interesting groups. They have a topology and these groups are totally disconnected and they have a um, basis consisting of open compact neighborhoods. Okay. So it's a, it's a very interesting object. Mm -hmm. And then later in uh, as a postdoc, I um, transitioned more to study representations of these groups. Uh, so just to study maps from this group, group homomorphisms of this group, into the space of automorphisms of a usually infinite dimensional complex vector space. Infinite dimensional, infinite, okay. Yes, <laughs> that makes it much more interesting and complicated, but usually you reduce it actually to representations that are valued in a finite dimensional okay. vector space, or act on a finite dimensional vector space by reducing to compact subgroups. Okay. So in some sense, the, the whole finite idea is lying behind it, and then you transfer things to the infinite okay. world. And so that's then what I, I did next to explore all these representation the, um, of periodic groups. Mm -hmm. And I proved that a lot of these representations have a particularly nice shape so that we can actually write them down very explicitly. So even though they are infinite dimensional, we can write them very explicitly as the space of functions that satisfy some nice properties. And that's all determined by some finite data. Okay. And so that's, that's one big thing I've done. And then I'm also now looking into different incarnations of what's called the Langlands program. So as oh. I said, the Langlands program is the idea that on the one hand, there is um, representation theory. On the other hand, there's number theory and there's an, some deep connection between the two. Mm -hmm. And so one version of that, for example, also featured in Fermat's last theorem, there it was important. Um, but you can define, could make these conjectures at very different levels. So at the local level, um, which is the, the level I'm mostly interested in the moment, um, but also at the global level, the one that has applications to Fermat's last theory, which I also studied a bit, found very interesting. And recently, and there has been an upgrade to the categorical level, which I also find very exciting and try to look into it. And then there's a, even a relative version. So there are tons of different mm -hmm. incarnations of this big philosophy that you want to connect to different areas. Um, All right. Which I find very interesting. So you would say that basically that is the future of the field, like Langlands is the next big interesting thing for you? Or? I think, yeah, Langlands has become popular recently mm -hmm. and throughout for various different reasons on one end, as I said, I mean, from us last theory mm -hmm. received a lot of attention, of course. 
Um, then recently there was a work of Falk and Scholz that um, showed basically in an abstract way the existence of a Langlands correspondence. A lot of conjectures are still open, but it just was so brand new um, that a lot of people are actually very interested in working on these technical things now. But I'm also interested on in trying to make things explicit. So I really want to understand how do these representations look like explicitly? And how can one write down this correspondence explicitly? Okay. There's been a recent breakthrough as well by Tasha Kalita, for example, to write down um, the correspondence in a la for a large class of representations. Um, it's, it's very active <laughs> research to understand the details of this, prove that it satisfies all the um, desired properties and extend it um, to obtain a full correspondence. Okay, cool. And what would you tell students like who are interested in entering this field? What should they, like maybe they don't know whether they want to do uh, the PhD and they want to know what should they study? What should they look into to? Oh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, well, there are two things. So if you know you want to study these things, I always recommend to study what reductive groups are. This is often not taught, but it's very important. So that's one of the things I did as a beginning grad student to just learn myself what are reductive groups. Um, the other thing, if you don't even know if that's some area you want to go into, but have some knowledge already, you might enjoy the IGS summer school lectures and soon uh, also notes. Um, the IHS had a summer school, I think it's two summers ago, um, on this topic and a lot of different um, speakers gave short courses on various different topics. So one can get a very nice overview there of what is the current state of the art and how, what's the flavor of the different um, topics and where might one want to start, what looks interesting. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> that was very helpful. Thanks.